Hi, my name is Susanna Barton. I'm the founder of the Grand Plans online community, and welcome to episode three of Grand Plans, the podcast. Uh, Today we have Suzanne Honeycutt, the queen of fun, here to talk with us about the importance of community and faith and so many other things on our um, senior stroll. Hi there, and welcome to the third episode of the Grand Plans podcast. Today, I am girl crushing out to have Suzanne Honeycutt, the queen of fun, here in the studio today, and we're going to be talking about all sorts of things. And Suzanne, thank you for being here today. Um, welcome to Welcome to the studio. Thank you. It's a pretty impressive setup you've got going on here. Isn't it? I mean, that Fifth's Productions is something else. He, yeah. He's quite the, quite the guy. Um, but anyway, Suzanne uh, has been in our neighborhood over in San Marco for, let's see, I'm doing the math in my head, 20 years. Is that mm-hmm. right? About. Yep. She lives on the Duck Pond. She and her husband, Joe, they have... Um, many many fans so as much as i love suzanne there are about a bajillion others in our neighborhood who feel the same way if not more so um anyway suzanne um is a wealth of good information and and a good example of so many wonderful things so that's what we're going to talk about today um and we're going to start off by talking about community and you and joe have done such a wonderful job of being a community resource and uh, supporting others, others supporting you. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to talk a little bit about how that fits into, you know, the this golden years time, mm-hmm. you know, if that's how, wh- what kind of resource that is mm-hmm. to you. Well, we moved, uh, when we moved into our neighborhood, we originally moved into a rental home while our house was being remodeled. And so um, we were on a side street and it was the first time actually in our whole married life that we had lived in an in a real neighborhood we had always lived uh in cities but we had lived with a lot of property around us and so i was so excited Mm -hmm. to have um neighbors and so um i was sitting in the doctor's office one day reading an article uh this was pre-retirement in a guidepost magazine because it's either that or golf magazine when you're in the doctor's office you've got kind of two choices (laughs) right you know And so I was reading about a woman that said she was doing her Bible study and it was uh, on Jesus, the man asking Jesus, what's the most important commandment? And Jesus said, well, the most important is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your strength. But he said, the second one is almost like it. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. And she said, you know, she had always concentrated on the first one because you always think, well, the first, the big, you know, the big, most important one. Uh, But she said, you know, he said the second one was almost like it. And so number two is really important, too. And she said, I wave to my neighbors when we see each other pulling in and out of the driveway, but I don't really know my neighbors. So she decided to have a soup dinner at her house once a month. And she would make a big pot of soup, and she would invite her neighbors, and she said they could bring something or not, you know, if they had bread or salad or whatever. And she said she was shocked at how many people started coming. And it really changed the neighborhood. She said, we went from being um, acquaintances to being almost like a family. And you did the same thing when you moved into your house on the duck pond. And so that's when I said to my husband, Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? I am on the Myers-Briggs all E. I don't have one introvert answer. Mm -hmm. My husband's probably pretty much all I without an E in the -hmm. the equation. So I had to kind of do the hard sell on him. And I said, Joe, let's just try this. Let's try this for three months when we moved into our permanent house. And um, I said, let's just try it for three months. I put flyers in all the neighbor's mailboxes um, and said, you know, come to our house. And I would say the first month we probably had about seven or eight people show up and i think in the back of their minds they thought we were going to be selling amway (laughs) because everybody everybody knows we're christians uh just because they see us going to church on sunday mornings or whatever um but when the word got out gradually each month it increased because that we weren't selling amway 
Um, the only thing weird that we did that we, was we would ask everyone to hold hands and say grace before we would eat. And that ended up being a real highlight because a lot of these families didn't go to church, but they were so excited for their kids to experience this social experiment. Oh, yeah. So the kid, even the, you know, the adults would all say, come on, we're getting ready to say the blessing. And we ended up usually having 40 to 50 people come a month mm-hmm. and um, did it for years until pre-COVID, just before COVID. Um, and it changed our whole neighborhood. And it was, I got it down to a science. Um, one of the things, once I made that decision, you know, God doesn't talk to me all the time, hmm. but every once in a while, I'll get an impression. I know it's not me. And one of the things that I, I felt like I was impressing on me was, Suzanne, this is not about you. This is not about place cards in China and centerpieces. Keep it simple. Keep, mm-hmm. Don't let your pride get in the way or you will resent doing it. And, um, people will be put off right and so I made a deal with God it was all disposable all paper Mm -hmm. all got thrown away well you've been such a a rock in the community and um, have supported others through your potlucks and through uh, projects that you've done through your church through studies through just bringing people together what is as a senior what has that done for you in your, <laughs> how has it come back to you um, to, and, and helped with this time, this season of your life? Well, when Joe, community? Joe retired, uh, we were both anxious. He was mm-hmm. anxious about how he was going to fill his hours. And I was anxious about how I was going to keep the house picked up all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're on different scales on that, on that too. Um, but you know, because we had those relationships and because our neighborhood's a very young neighborhood, mm-hmm. um, and they really got used to asking us to be the grandparents at Grandparents Day. They got used to asking and us. You always say yes. Always say yes yeah. because that's always fun. Yeah. Um, and or to babysit. Um, we're the people that you call that Hendricks Elementary School calls if their kids need to be picked up if they get sick or had lice. Uh, we're <laughs> we're on the list of if you can't get a hold of the parents, you call us. And so we, you know, we just. It just organically grew, but we had no idea, uh, and we loved it. Mm-hmm. You know, we not we don't live near our own children, and um, so we did. We had no idea until all of a sudden we had a few challenges mm-hmm. that the neighbors just overwhelmed us with offers and care and um, whatever we needed. We got kind of spoiled and kind of like who's going to do what for us today i had yeah. i had major surgery um last year and it, it people still forget that i'm doing better and they'll bring us a meal and they're yeah. like really we're fine yeah. but um well is that is it part of your grand plan to, to embed yourself in a community or tell me a little bit about your own personal grand plans if you have one and what kind of um specifics are involved in that well, we have long-term care insurance, mm-hmm. and that pays the same amount whether you go to assisted living or whether you stay in your own home. Mm-hmm. So we know that we have that option. A lot of it depends on um, who goes down first, you know, if it's yeah. me or if it's Joe. Right. We, we've yeah. got two separate grand plans. Mm-hmm. Um, best case scenario would be able to stay in our home. Right. and um, Which I'll add, just for anyone who's not seen their beautiful home it's one story yes it's surrounded by community and people um there's a park a bench uh t- picnic table outside where people are invited to come sit it's a real community spot it's a great spot um, because everybody walks past it yeah. every day going to school or mm-hmm. coming to the duck pond and so yeah the, the location people say where do you live and i say i live in times square yeah you do, <laughs> you do san yeah. marco times square yeah yeah um, so when we remodeled our house when we first bought it we did everything handicap accessible mm-hmm. it's not visible but we made sure dories were wide and um that we could get in and out of the shower without having to step up over something. So we did that years ago. Mm-hmm. Long-term care insurance was really, uh, is really critical. It gives us a lot of peace. Yes, and that's and a choice you have to really make and yes, stick it is. with. I yes, mean, it's it is. Not a, I understand not a, a an inexpensive uh, investment, but one that pays off in the end. But when you're doing when you need it, it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and when you're doing it, do it with that in mind because mm-hmm. we were just in our 50s when we did that and weren't right. really thinking along that line too much so mm-hmm. yeah also um my husband's a money person and i'm not but when we sold our beach house um 
we had the option of either reinvesting that money, that was my husband's recommendation, or paying our house off and not having a house payment. And physically, it makes more sense to keep paying because you can deduct that from your taxes. But psychologically for me, I loved the idea that we own that house and that if Armageddon happens, we get to stay in our house right. to the bitter end. Mm -hmm. And so Joe uh, acquiesced and let me do that, even though it wasn't a, the the wise or the smartest. I don't want to say it wasn't the wisest, but not the smartest decision financially. Mm -hmm. um, and what about, uh, have you gone down the legal uh, rabbit holes and started planning that way also? Or? We have. We, yeah. we, um, Bob Joel is our financial planner mm -hmm. and he is just a great guy. He was in a, uh, couples group with us and for years and we just knew that we couldn't navigate all that or weren't interested really. Mm -hmm. And he's yeah. got a wonderful reputation and he has, um, you know, he's the one, you know, if I drop dead or Joe drops dead, first call you're going to make is is bob joel yeah and then you call 911 right <laughs> <laughs> well that makes sense mm -hmm. gotta get everything squared away yeah he yeah. he knows all he has the keys to the kingdom believe me yeah well is there any other part of your plan and your thinking as you've been going along and what advice do you have for others who are making their way down the sunset stroll well we have and we have some dear friends whose parents moved from jacksonville to penny farms which is a uh, retirement community it initially was for retired pastors and missionaries and um we went to visit them and just fell in love with it yeah it's uh, only about an hour and a half drive from where we live right now but the majority of the of the um, residents there are Christians hmm. and a lot of them are pastors and missionaries most of them have traveled all over the world I love travel so yeah. they say they've never um, been around such a well-educated intellectual group of people in their whole lives and they've lived in Europe they've been everywhere and so that's that's our fallback is yeah. is penny farms because we like to choose the community uh, right. of people once again, choosing community and looking for people who, with whom you connect yeah. well with. It's not the fanciest to. place, but we don't. We're not interested in fancy. We, mm -hmm. we really want relationships that are satisfying. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any uh, advice for others or things that, uh, as you've gone along, where you thought, well? Better tell something, you know, person coming along behind. This is don't do that, or you know, things that you've learned that you wouldn't do again, or some things that you've learned. Well, I we planet. were talking about it on the way here, mm -hmm. and I think it's important. We love animals, mm -hmm. but you get to an age where you think, well, it's like your kids. We love our kids, but not they aren't that cute to everybody else. Yeah. So <laughs> we've implemented a policy that if we do adopt an animal. Um, that we get a senior animal and I've told Joe our plan is that we all die on the same week oh and yes mm -hmm. that's a great plan isn't that plan. clean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's definitely going to work mm -hmm. we're all going to go yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she has quite a menagerie at her house some adorable do. dogs and <laughs> oh my gosh 16 year old cat uh -huh. yeah. 16 year old dog oh my gosh mm -hmm. yeah well the end is near yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> um, so and I have to I, I know you have talked about your faith and um, how some of these communities are appealing for that reason. Yes. Um, how has faith played a role in your planning and your the choices that you're making now? Well, you know, we have tried to, to live, um, and it hasn't been a sacrifice at all. Actually, we, we've had a ball. We've got a great life. Nobody feels sorry for us. But we have tried to live our faith without being preachy or religious but to just make ourselves available and to genuinely love people you do that so well well it's been a delight to us and um i think that as we as we plan our old our final third act as they say mm -hmm. um we just want to be people that come alongside the people around us we 
our pastor said, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but some people are born on third base and they go through life thinking they're the ones that hit the triple. Right. We know we did not hit the triple. We know we were born on, Joe and I were born on third base. And that's what brought us to Jacksonville. He closed his company so that we could find an organization to serve uh, people that weren't born on third base. Mm-hmm. And we came here to for Joe to be the executive director of Habitat for Humanity. Yeah. And that's what brought us here. And... Um, <clears throat> So we just like to be useful. You know, we just want to be useful as long as we can. Does that help you? uh, Does it make you feel young to be helped to to be useful? You know, there's nothing that's better for your self-esteem than to think that you have something to share. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. I've been a giver and I've been a receiver. And I'm here to tell you, it is way more fun to be the giver than it is to humble yourself and be the receiver and be a good receiver. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, when, um, you mentioned it briefly about how you're asked to be uh, go to Grandparents Day mm-hmm. and those kinds of things. And I've always thought that was just so amazing. And I just have to throw it in there, you know, that um, there have been families uh, who are missing a grandparent or a mother mm-hmm. or someone of that in that role. And mm-hmm. you have stepped in and agreed to be that person. So unselfishly and so instantly and that is I've just I so admired the way you've done that with so many people including for me I know uh, there have been many times you've stepped in where I thought oh I'm just so glad to have a person like Suzanne in my life well it has I I, you know I blush because it it was never with the intention of you know something that we were giving away we just we love kids we love people and I'll tell you a funny story. We have a young uh, two kids that were like, I guess they were like four and seven, maybe. We met them at a um, ministry that our church was involved in, and their mom was a single mom. And so I had been a single mother for a number of years, and so my heart goes out to single women. Mm-hmm. I know what it's like. I had my parents, and they were wonderful. But this woman didn't have parents, and she was so... Um, gracious and so we decided to just come alongside that family we integrated those kids into our family and they came to our house after school we got them involved in projects and stuff and just watched them blossom well one week joe and i were taking one of the kids to one of the little girl to one project and a little boy to another project and joe was we were shuffling back and forth and and joe looked at me and he was still working full-time and he said are we going to have to take care of them for the rest of Mm -hmm. our lives? And I said, probably, because they are our family now. We love those kids. And if we do, it will be an honor. And he was like, okay. (laughs) Well, fast forward, Joe had just gotten out of the hospital and had, had dislocated his finger. I was getting ready for major surgery and hobbling around on a walker. And those kids are now 20 and sophomore in high school, whatever that is. And um, so they come to our house. We got them involved in the youth group. And they come to our house on Sunday nights on the way home from youth group. And they love to come and sit at the table. And they'll say, remember the time we did this? Remember the time we did that? Aww. And where your own grandchildren will be in a hurry, like just check it off the list. They love to hang out at the house. And they yeah. make themselves a glass of water and do their thing. So we had a good visit. And they were getting in the car, driving down the driveway. And I looked at Joe. And I said, do you know what Elijah is saying to Leilani? He said, what? I said, he's saying, do we have to take care of them for the rest of our lives? Exactly. (laughs) And Leilani's saying, yes, because we love them. They're family now. So that's that's how it works. And you don't do it because you you don't even see that day coming. But boy, it comes. Girl, your heart is big. And I love it so much. And I'm going to move quickly into another realm from heart to beauty oh you're a very beautiful woman oh my goodness tell us what you're doing girl what how are you looking so fine i tell you um my stylist is god because i wasn't that pretty until my hair turned white and nobody (laughs) ever came up to me and said oh you're so pretty and it's you know it ain't that great now but um God, when my hair turned white, and you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, um, you know, when the woman's hair turns white, that that, you know, that's her glory. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're thinking, oh my gosh, 
gosh, my hair is going to get gray or whatever. It really is flattering to women once their hair goes gray. Even the youngins are... Oh, yeah, they're, everyone's uh, dying the hair it's, gray. It's the thing. And purple, light purple gray. Like that, that color that your grandmother used to get in the and beauty you'd parlor. Sit, and you'd sit in the yeah. back of the church and go, what were they thinking? Mm-hmm. Well, it's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that joy, come, that beauty comes from within very clearly with you. Oh, um, thank you. And uh, it will make me sad when... Um, I've got to drag those nice porta potties out to your funeral, which is the last thing I'm like going to talk do it. to you about. And you can pay people to do that for you. You don't yeah. have to well, do it. I know, but Joe may have concerns about the costs, and I want to be hands on with this. He's got. He's fine. So uh, it's a little backdrop, a little back story. Mm-hmm. Um, Suzanne has asked me to assist with some of the finer details of her funeral service, which will be um, on the duck pond, mm-hmm. um, and. There will be lots and lots of very nice high-tech porta potties for all the guests to enjoy. With the built-in flower With, vases. Yes. And the toilets that flush. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's my role. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does, on a serious <laughs> note, <laughs> make me think how smart Suzanne is for thinking about these things and at least talking about it in a, a fun way. And I mean, obviously that will be sad and not you know fun no it's gonna be we'll fun. flush the toilets and that'll be a goof but yeah anyway it's gonna be so fun tell me more do you have what is what else is going on with the plan and and why it, did you just decide one day that you were going to start thinking about it and well i've lost parents together? and i yeah. you know i think that triggers a lot of this i've lost parents and um at my father's funeral, I came from a funny family, an outrageous funny uh, that's family. That's a surprise. Our funerals were the best. And mm-hmm. everybody goes to funerals and cries, but ours, everybody goes to funerals and laughs. And so that's one of the premises of my funeral. I want the um, the pastor to say, if anything ever funny happened to you while you were with Suzanne, I'd love for you to just share. And that's pretty much going to be the sermon, to tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, the songs are not going to be hymns. They're going to be Motown songs. Like, I want... Uh, the song by Aretha Franklin, You're the Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me, yes. sung to Jesus Christ. Okay. And um, I want the um, people get ready. There's a train a coming. I think that's a good witness <laughs> about, you know, there's there's another world coming and there's mm-hmm. it's going to be great. You know, just know that that's coming. Um, but, yeah, my father at his funeral, first of all, he died when he was 87 and there were over 700 people that came to his funeral because wow. he loved people. And was this in Kentucky? In Louisville. In Louisville, mm-hmm. okay. And so at one point the pastor said, if Jay Sumner ever gave you money or bought you a set of golf clubs, stand up. And I mean, half the people that <laughs> stood up, that was his, golf clubs were his love language. And it was so fun. And at the end of the funeral, my son um, always loved that last scene in To Kill a Mockingbird mm-hmm. because uh, when Atticus has lost the lawsuit and um, and all of the all of the black people are sitting in the up in the top tier, they're not allowed to come into the courthouse on the bottom, but they're sitting watching it. And Scout, his father's her his little girl is sitting up there with with um, with the black folks in town when he is getting ready when Atticus is shuffling his papers and getting ready to walk out of the courthouse, um, the man that that is the pastor that's sitting with the scout says, Scout, get up. Your father's walking by. And all of the black people in the in the mezzanine section, mm-hmm. I guess you would call it, stood up as mm-hmm. Atticus walks out. And they, we played that scene at my father's funeral, the last thing, and everyone in the sanctuary stood up while they took... Uh, my dad's coffin. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So y- y- um, you have a legacy in your mind of, of humor and um, faith meaning. Yes. You know. Yeah. I want to, um, I want to, you know, I want people to come. I think, I think people think of Christians as being stodgy and, and, and stiff, but I really feel like the joy that we have uh, is the best witness we have. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's like that scene in Sleepless in Seattle where the lady says, I'll have what she's having. Well, I want to live my faith in a way that people go, well, I'm intrigued. I want what she has. Yeah. Because I don't want to be preaching or condescending to people. Mm-hmm. I want to be a person that you think, hmm, 
this is curious. Yeah. Well, let me ask. I mean, I don't. I know what you're going to say. I think, but you know, along the lines of faith, do you have? friends or did you yourself ever feel like oh gosh you know time's a clicking I need to figure out this whole God thing this whole faith thing before I meet my maker like is that a thought I mean I know you're in a good place with your faith but what do you tell people that um, may be approaching and not so sure about what they're thinking and we didn't talk about this question ahead of time Um, you know I will just say to them if we're close enough friends, mm-hmm. you know, where are you with the Lord? Mm-hmm. And listen, I think so much more than talking is listening. And um, when they, if they, if they are intrigued or interested or have questions, you know, then I, I would love to talk to them about it. But um, I don't think very many people are cornered into mm-hmm. the kingdom of heaven. Um, but a lot of the young ones in the neighborhood come to me and say tell me what you think about this. Tell me what you think about that. Matter of fact, a, a group of young girls in the neighborhood have said, will, will you please do a Bible study for us? And to me, I like that progression of things much more than, I mean, people came to see Jesus. Jesus wasn't ne- knocking on doors, handing out flyers. Mm-hmm. Um, they were curious and they came and I, I feel like that's a that's a more dignified way for them and, and for me too. And you are doing a lot of shepherding um, just and not even in the faith sense, but shepherd, shepherding a lot, people along. I feel like you do a, such a beautiful job of that. Um, how does that play into these years when you're doing more teaching or mm-hmm. counseling versus building your, yourself up? Right. Um, yeah, we don't need to feather our own nest anymore. I just feel like God plopped us into the perfect neighborhood where mm-hmm. it's all younger girls. I think if I had to go through what I had to go through, somebody needs to benefit from it. And I started a single mom Sunday school class a few years ago. And um, it's been one of the joys of my life. And they still, um, even though that class isn't together anymore, they still text me and call me and invite me to their weddings. Aww, and, yeah. And, um, I just, you know, I, f- I feel like, and one of the things I always say to them, that I tell them the things I wish somebody had told me. Yeah. When I went through my divorce, I said, girls, I'm going to tell you, you're crazy, and you don't even know you're crazy, because you've gone through a life trauma, and you think you're thinking right, and you think you're making good choices, and you probably are not. Mm-hmm. So... Before you make any big decisions, call me and I get to be the, the cop. You know, this is stop, stop, don't do this. Is there anything else that you wish someone had told you ahead of time before um, this season? No, because I, my parents, um, they completely depended on me. And so I watched them get long-term care insurance. So I got long-term ter- mm-hmm. care insurance. I watched them have to make their house prepared to be accessible for them. I watched my dad. Um, I have a nephew who has profound intellectual differences. And so he just called us together one night, my sister and I, and said, girls, when I'm gone, you're going to get a stipend, but you're not going to get much. We're going to set up a foundation for Taylor so that he will be taken care of for the rest of his life because neither one of his parents were they were addicts Mm -hmm. and so um I watched him make a plan for my for my nephew and it was so admirable and my dad was didn't like to talk about death very much but he was very intentional about being a grown-up and leaving everyone in his family prepared my mother uh, wrote out all of her funeral wishes with the songs who was to preach it who was so that there was no conflict in the family over well do we do this or do we that no Mm -hmm. it was all written down so they there was some good modeling in your household excellent modeling there really was yeah Mm -hmm. that's great yeah Um, well Suzanne I feel like we've covered some good ground me too thank you and I just appreciate so much you coming over to the other side of town Mm -hmm. across the Atlantic Ocean across the river Mm -hmm. to come to (laughs) the studio but thank you so much for Um, your time today and for sharing um, your wisdom and um, your joie de vie. (laughs) Yes, Uh, all of that. So thank you. Oh, I love doing it, especially for my girl. Oh, (laughs) thank you. 
Thank you for being with us today on the third episode of Grand Plans, the podcast. Uh, We were so grateful to have Suzanne Honeycutt with us in the studio today. Um, Look for this uh, podcast. Um, You can find it on uh, Apple Podcasts, um, on YouTube, um, and on Facebook, Instagram, and that's it. Thank you.